Good morning and welcome to yet another episode of My PI Dream. Today on My PI Dream, I think we're gonna take a trip into the wet market in Lipa. I would like to get some vegetables for that new crock pot that I just picked up at the uh, SM uh, Mall the other day. Uh, last night I partook in a little bit too much wine and song, or should I say San Miguel and song, and there is a consequence that you have to pay when you engage in such activities. Uh, as you know, if you've been following my videos, that uh, I have a water problem here. And if you're not up and done with your shower by 5.30 in the morning, you're gonna be taking a cold shower. Or should I say no shower because, as you see, we never have water from 5.30 until about 9.30 in the morning. But hey, uh, I accept that. It's part of living uh, in this part of the world and uh, I'm not complaining. So, without further delay, let's get today's video underway. And, and before I head on down to the wet market, I just want to remind you that Monday is a uh, groundbreaking day, as you can see. Oh, one day, 23 hours. Not that I'm counting, but this is a big milestone uh, in this project that we've been playing on for the last uh, five years. So uh, hang around for that. Uh, I will be, be taking videos when the uh, construction crew gets out there and they actually start uh, doing some preparation for the property uh, before they actually start doing the build. Uh, so that should be pretty exciting. Also, one more good update. I received good news again from my car sales uh, uh, contact uh, in uh, the Philippines. He sent me a uh, text message that said, my truck will be in this weekend and uh, they'll do the prep on it for uh, getting it ready for delivery and I will be taking delivery of the truck sometime next week and I'll also do a video on that as well. So my days of public transportation are limited. Oh and of course no day would be complete without a good nutritious breakfast so let's get some breakfast on the way. And of course, um, uh, good Pinoy Tasty, or should I say uh, Pinoy Tiny? Quality Chinese technology. clouds. Uh, I hope I got my umbrella in my backpack. I think I'm good. So let me share a little tip with you if you're planning on doing a lot of walking on the streets around here. The vehicles even even though they have plenty of room on both sides even when there's no no uh, vehicle next to they're gonna get as close to you. They're gonna get as close to you as uh, they possibly can when they pass by you. So just be really careful when you're walking down the streets. So anyway, I'm standing. I'm standing here in the uh, the perimeter of this subdivision that we're actually going to be building in. And uh, one of the things that has to be done, uh, supposedly before they start doing construction on Monday, is it's supposed to clear about six of the mahogany trees, uh, similar to this one. That actually 
actually lines the perimeter of my lot. Uh, without them removing those mahogany trees, we can't build a uh, perimeter fence. So, uh, I hear what, what it, it seems to be chainsaws, <coughs> chainsaws in the background there. It doesn't sound like it's coming from actually where my lot is, but who knows. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll do a follow-up uh, when I come back after doing shopping at the wet market, and we'll see if they're actually working on trying to take those trees down. That would be fantastic. Well, my cur curiosity is actually uh, demanded. I actually go and take a look and see if they are actually working on a lot right now. Because if they get that cleared, then everything is a go for build on Monday, and there won't be any uh, any uh, distractions when they start doing the uh, the clearing of the lot. All the noise is coming from not my lot. I'm still going to check later on this afternoon on the way coming back and we'll take a look. So after my disappointment of hearing and seeing that the uh, chainsaws were actually for work being done by the model homes, I stopped by the administrator's office and to get a follow up on what was going on and I actually ran into uh, my architect inside there who was talking to the administrator and uh, I found out that they actually did start uh, cutting uh, the trees down, the mahogany trees on my property early this morning and uh, they're probably uh, down by now. I don't think they're gonna be cleared off the lot, uh, but they are down. So since I have some pressing time to get into town and I don't wanna get back while, while it's dark this afternoon, uh, if I have time when I get back, I'll stop by the site and uh, we'll take a look. If not, we'll stop by there tomorrow. So uh, onward to the uh, what? So anyway, I was gonna walk in, but I spent so much time talking with the uh, architect and the administrator that uh, I'm running a little bit late. So I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, I think I'm gonna catch a jeepney here just to take me, it's uh, just a couple of kilometers down the road, uh, save me a little bit of time. And uh, it's only 10 pesos. So I, I gotta tell you, with the, uh, the cloud cover and the humidity in the air, this is like the most humid day that I've seen since I've been down here. That saved me about 20 or 30 minutes in walking, uh, about a kilo of sweat, and only cost me seven pesos. Not a bad deal. So here's one of those places I was talking about in one of my earlier videos where you can actually do exchange that are not at the bank. You can actually get better rates at places like this, but you have to be careful. Uh, you don't really want to be walking out of these places with a lot of money in your pocket. Uh, it's one of those cautions. So, so finally here we make it to the uh, the, the wet market. It's uh, like at the corner of Malbini and uh, El Mayo Street. So uh, let's go in and uh, look and see what they got. This, this place is huge and it's, it's like a maze and it's so easy to get lost in here. I get lost every time that I come down here. I never find the same place that I went to uh, the, the time before. Uh, so uh, it's, it's pretty much anything that you're looking for, you're gonna find down here in the market. You're, they're gonna have uh, fresh produce, uh, they're gonna have household goods and have clothing, they're gonna have electronic shoe repair, uh, watch repair, a little bit of everything. So anyway, it's, it's just my luck. Uh, they just had a brown out inside here in the market. So uh, I can't show you too much. Uh, we'll, we'll go through a little bit and we'll see what they have in this part of the market. I'm glad you have lights. <laughs> so, so it wasn't the whole market that was in the brown out. It was just one section of the market. So I'm actually over here where they have the, uh, where lots of rice. Rice as far as the eye can see. Oh, 
Oh, these carrots are huge. They're too big. Hu huge carrots. It's like it's like, it's like Jurassic Park carrots. Is that normally that big? Supposed to be that big? Yeah. That's it for shopping down in the wet market today. Uh, now it's time to head back, try to find my way back to uh, any lab. All right, we're back here at the apartment. Let's, uh, let's see if we have water. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So anyway, what I'm going to do is, uh, I was planning on going out and taking a look at the property. I got plenty of time now. It's, it's, it's early. It's around two o'clock in the afternoon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the vegetables and the beef that I picked up today at the wet market and I'm going to start a stew and after I get the stew uh, started, uh, I'm going to head on over and take a look at the property. So anyway, we got the stew started, so I might have some dinner tonight, and I might have some vegetables that I've been craving so badly. So I'm going to head over to the property. Uh, I understand they cut trees down today, and I want to get over there before it actually gets dark and uh, add it to this video. So uh, let's head over to uh, the property. to my property yet but I, I can already see a huge difference I, I can tell that they cut down the mahogany trees 
and yes they did uh, it uh the lot is totally different now from what it was originally you can see where they took down this one this is actually where the the driveway is going to go to the side of the house the house is actually going to be built right here with those coconut trees are right there and that uh banana tree bunch uh, right there right next to the right next to the uh, coconut tree that's the house the house will extend over close to this coconut tree over here uh, this will be the driveway you can see they took this one down this mahogany and this mahogany so and where, where you'll see now where they took down all these mahogany trees this is where the actual problem actually existed because this is where the perimeter fence is going to actually be built and all of these mahogany trees were right in the center of where the fence line that what in this development you only get one half of a meter from the sidewalk to your property and then from on your property one half meter that's where you can build your fence if you put a fence up now you can see right here the base of this tree and the root system goes underneath the sidewalk so and that's that's a, a meter a little over a meter meter and a half and each one of them are like this so we, we had no way of building on the easement of the half meter restriction that we had on there so we requested through the developer to um, cut down the uh, mahogany trees although we hated to cut them down because uh, they're a 15 year growth at least a 15 year growth and and they were beautiful um, but they shouldn't have planted it in this specific area this close had they planted it inside the property which then it would have been our property on the inside and then uh, we possibly could have but mahoganies grow so fast their root system is so massive and I'll show you when we go down a little bit further but uh, you can see they cut down that one on this side and this is two and this is three This is four, and this is number five, and you can see what I'm talking about, the massive root structure right here, it's actually, and you can see where it's actually broken, uh, the concrete sidewalk where it's going up and lifting it. And here is number six, and you can see where it's pushed the ground system up, uh, so this, this is going to be uh, quite a challenge when the contract's coming because you're gonna have to pull out all of these roots here because that's actually where the perimeter fence is gonna go on this uh, construction build so the the property looks totally different without these trees being here but mahogany trees uh, they're so massive and when they have typhoons over here uh, one of the threats that you have is the potential that the mahogany tree can actually be uprooted and fall on your house and our house is going to be right here so you can imagine this tree falling in a direction that every one of these were cut and you can see this one right here so you can see the limbs would actually have fallen and uh, uh and done a lot of damage on the house if it would ha would have fallen in that direction so it's a good thing that we have these taken down uh i regret having to cut down any tree but we will replant and it will be uh, uh more beautiful i hope <laughs> than uh, what we had here previously. Well, anyway, that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed the trip down to the wet market and I appreciate you joining me coming out to the property to take a look at what it looks like with the trees down. And don't forget, Monday is groundbreaking day. Uh, please join me with my adventure of building a house in the Philippines and hopefully I can pass on some tips if you're thinking about doing this yourself or if you're just curious as to how things are actually done in the Philippines. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, please uh, share. And if you haven't already subscribed, uh, please subscribe. And uh, we'll see you next time on My PI Dream.